we will all offer the prayer of meditation. Almighty Father, to make a beast that is perishing into a man. This amazing mystery of God, we thank you for giving this to us. By this mystery, may we become a man. My Father, the blessings that you have put in front of us, may we all receive them. In Jesus' name, we thank you and bless. Amen. Who is it that we believe in? You know, you're here. Who, who do you believe in? So who is it that you believe in? So now you know a little bit with your head, so you say Jehovah God. Jehovah God, it's someone who has a relationship with him that seeks Jehovah God. But those who are riffraff, who go to these fake religions, these churches without the mystery of God, they, 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 for anyone, it will be God. But because you're saints, you don't know properly. Because you don't know this, that's you don't, you don't know who you are as a person. A pastor with demons, is that a true pastor? If you have sin and you don't repent, what sticks? 1 John chapter 3, verse 8, demons. So if you have demons, how can that be a pastor, a deacon, an, an elder, a theologian? You know, where in the Bible does it say that? Yesterday, after you prayed the whole day, as you were working at work, you know, selling things, whatever you were doing, you know, when you pray like that, then you have less shame in your conscience. And after doing a lot of it, you don't have any shame. That's 1 John chapter 2, verse 10. So towards God, someone who has no shame, that is a man. So I say to you, out of the worst of sinners, there's no one as, as evil as Pastor Park. Do you know why? Because you, who God has sent, if I don't take on your sins, then 100% I'm fake. That's Luke chapter 9, verse 23. So is it just me? Is it just like that for me? Well, God's first exhortation is that you pray for all mankind, 1 Timothy chapter 2. But you don't even pray for others because you don't even pray for yourself and your children. So even though you're filled with sin, so before I look at others, when I look at myself, I am the worst of sinners. Let's find Hebrews chapter 6, verse 14. Please, do not depart from blessings. In Korea, you know, you, we have all these characters stamped on women's clothes that says blessings. Even on pillows, we have the character for blessings on clothes, on blankets. Everywhere, it's blessing, blessings. But that's not wrong. It's right. God says, I will surely give you blessings. Why do we believe in God? To surely receive blessings. And he says, do you know what blessings are? Where your family multiplies, your business multiplies. But the wealthy people in our country, once they're multiplying, they're crazy about trying to get a good name. And after receiving a good reputation, all you hear is, are their families being ruined. You look on the news, isn't it like that? When you look at the world, you need to realize it happens according to the Bible. It is so sad. And yet people seek freedom of religion. What is freedom of religion? If you don't know a man properly, you don't know what food they need. So yesterday, even as we eat, radish we eat that so commonly but you don't know what you need to use the top of the radish for the middle and the bottom if you're just eating it if you're stuffing your face then you're a dog pig if i say stuffing your face that is humility in front of god you know a dog pig how can we say oh yes that person ate that's crazy so this is where you have to repent this is where you're not right with god 
So in order not to sin in that area, do you know how much I say, Lord, I don't know, but please use my mouth. So if you don't have demons inside of you, if you have received the Holy Spirit, God will use your mouth. Matthew chapter 10, verse 20. So if God's going to use my mouth, why would I be like a demon and prepare the sermon to say, oh God, why are you going to use my mouth? I'm going to prepare the sermon. Which one is right? Demons, they prepare. But if you have the Holy Spirit, God uses your mouth. Matthew chapter 10, verse 20. So which is the right sermon? Which is the fake sermon? But you sit there not knowing anything. So who is it that gives blessings? You? You're asking for death. Let's have a look around and let's greet each other. Let's say, let's receive blessings. Let's receive blessings. God, he said today, I will surely give you blessings. So let's just read verse 14. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 14. So John chapter 1 verse 1, we're trying to go there. Joseph, who became overseer of a family, he didn't study overseas. His father didn't pay for his school fees or he was betrayed by his brother. But if you're always with God, then you will become like Joseph. But fakes, they're like, let's meet God. So if you meet God, what are you going to do? What are you going to do if you just pass by and just meet him in a flash? It's not about meeting God. God has to always be with you. So who has said this word? Hebrews chapter 6 verse 14. Saying, I will surely bless you and I will surely multiply you. Amen. So I will surely. Who? Who will he give to? So who says this? God, where does it say that? We're in verse 13. So that's Genesis chapter 2. If you believe, then the blessings of Abraham, you become the same as Abraham. So to those who have received the gift of faith, let's read verse 13. For when God made the promise to Abraham, since he could swear by no one greater, he swore by himself. Amen. So it says, surely I will bless you. To who? Well, here it says you. So it's to me. And it's not just blessing he will surely. So why is it you don't want to receive these sure blessings? I will surely. So it's not like he's going to start giving you blessings and then he's going to stop. No, he says, surely he will make you receive blessings. If you don't receive, so if you don't listen to your parents, what happens? You know, you're going to, the bottom of your legs are going to start burning and, you know, bleeding. So how much does God love us to say, I will surely, and what is he going to do? So the blessings that you want so much, that you like so much, this is what he will give to us. So who gives this? Well, verse 13, it says it's God. So God will surely. So whatever religion you believe in, if you want to receive blessings, so he will surely give you blessings. But after after you receive blessings, you know, he says he will multiply you, your, your business. And in the world, if you multiply it, to a certain point, you see these huge conglomerates just being ruined. What kind of prayer did they pray? There's no one who prays as well as shamans. You know, in the rain, everyone else would run away except those shamans. When I went to the... When I went in the neighbourhood, there were these shamans and all these people with candles and the pastors... They they go up to the highest spot. As soon as it rains, they're the first to start running. Don't don't curse, because I was the same. So when it was raining, everyone starts running. 
But the shamans, even though it's raining, they just sit there doing it. And I thought, wow, you know, God must like them better than us. Is that prayer? A prayer without the mystery of God, it's all demons. So God saying that he will bless. Let's read verse 15. How is it you receive the blessings? So that's in verse 15. And so, having patiently waited, he obtained the promise. Amen. So how is it you receive the blessings? So when it says to patiently wait, you don't know what patiently waiting is. That's why you're a demon. Patiently waiting, 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 5. It's the mystery of God, four-step repentance. Christ is patience. It's to patiently wait. Why? Because in Christ, you meet God. So who does God surely bless? To me. So if I receive blessings, then my children do well. A thousand generations do well. That's Exodus chapter 20, verse 5 and 6. But if I don't receive blessings, Numbers chapter 14, verse 18, then three and four generations, I kill them. So if your ancestors, your grandfather, your mother, your grandmother, if they sin and they don't repent, then the children, even the daughter, even if she becomes a prostitute, she can't feed herself. That's Lamentations chapter 5, verse 7. What, you think you can earn money by becoming a prostitute? If you have your ancestors' sins remain, even if you become a prostitute, you can't feed yourself. You know, our ancestors, the confusion thinking is, if you're diligent, then you can feed yourself. But if you have your ancestors' sins remaining, even if you go out at dawn and you come back in the evening, you can't feed yourself. That's Lamentations chapter 5, verse 7. So you have your ancestor sins remaining and you talk about freedom of religion. It's because of this sin that the six, six books of the Bible have nothing to do with me. So who does God give blessings to? To who? Who is God? Let's find John chapter 1 verse 1. He is the word. He is this word. So you've come to surely receive blessings. But when... You see how you work. You can't receive blessings when you're told to do some work. If I was God, if it was me, I'd kill you straight away with a lightning strike. You know, why stand there just viewing others? You know, when when they were doing the Christmas tree, there's people who just stand there watching the whole day. I, th I thought, look at those idiots. You know, the apartments being built is for us to learn in front of us. Constructing these apartments, is this easy work or or hard work? It's hard labor. Do, you know, can't you just start work at 9 o'clock? Then you'll be cursed. You'll be ruined. The com company will be ruined. You were told to say, receive blessings to the person next to you. But those people who aren't blessed, who are cursed, who haven't come here, remember their faces and you know that they're cursed. The mystery of God, forced at repentance. Without that, can you go inside of Christ or not? So if you aren't in Christ and you say Amen, where have you learned such lies? There are so many churches like that in Korea. You ask them if they're doing forced at repentance and they say, oh, that's heresy. And you tell them to say Amen, they'll say Amen. How can they say such lies so shamelessly? That's Korea. In America, you know, they're the fake Korean churches. So who will say these correct words in love? If you don't keep the commandment, you'll go to hell. If you don't love your neighbor, you'll go to hell. So if you make denominations, do you love your neighbor or not? So denominations, 100%, you'll go to hell. Romans chapter 2, verse 8, Jude chapter 1, verse 19. How is it that you cannot say correct words? So it's God who surely helps, who surely blesses. Who is this God? John chapter 1 verse 1. Let's read it together. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Amen. So it's God who helps. Who is God? He is this Word. So if you say, oh, it's Luke who wrote this Word, or... It's God who is this word. So how can you say, 
You know, you pay money to go to theological college, and that's what they say. It's Luke who wrote this. Even now, I'm repenting that I learned that. This word is God. The biggest, the biggest boat in the world. Where, where did it hit and sink? On ice. You know, why would a boat sink? Because it's hit some ice cream. But it hit some ice. And the, the biggest boat in the world, which people were boasting about, you know, just because a boat hits ice, you know, how is it it sinks? It's because that ice was so big. So this word is God. The person who, who speaks this word, they may say one or two words. But underneath, if that ice is 10,000, then... When the boat hits, it will sink. The demons will depart. So this word, only the man of understanding is the pastor that God has sent. The man of understanding repents of 5,000 verses and without looking at anything can, can preach anything. But if you don't even know it yourself, so you have to write it down, that's a fake pastor. What you're going to preach, then you kill yourself, your children and others. That's Colossians chapter 2, verse 8. So you went around, listened to those sermons. You ate that and you killed yourself and your children. How much have you repented of that? And when you did that, do you know how much you tormented God? Isaiah chapter 43, verse 24. Every time you sin, you have tormented God. And he doesn't forget. He remembers. And he repays to you and your children with disasters. So now that the exams are over, oh, pastor, well, just because the exams are over. So yesterday, the children's exams ended. But if you want to do more well, when you continue to pray, you know what I witnessed to you? You know, this student didn't have the marks to go to university. His score, you know, he needed more than 200 to get to one of the universities, but because his score was so low. I don't know who did it, but someone put a mark, a line in front of that score. And now he's been a teacher for more than 10 years. Because the parents were praying, that's what happened. You know, I don't know if a fly had maybe done a poo and it looked like a line, but that's how there were workings. Why are there these um, misunderstandings these mistakes, because the teacher can make these mistakes. If you do four step repentance, oh, my child is someone who could never do this. It's so strange. These things happen. So where does this happen? It's when you continue to be with God. So who is it that gives blessings? It's God. And he said he will surely give them. So who is this God? God is the word. So unless you're a man of understanding, you're a fake pastor. Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 15. This is what God has appointed. Even if you have a doctorate, that's not what God acknowledges. So where is God? Let's find 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 19. He is inside a four-step repentance. So if you can't smile and you're not joyful, it's because you're tied up to demons. So if you're tied up to demons, what about your children? Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1. They're living, but they're dead. So you and I, he, God said, he will surely give you blessings. It's God who he said it, said it, and God is the word. So we have to enter into the word. So where is God? So a sermon without forced at repentance, the mystery of God, it is 100% fake. Colossians chapter 2 verse 8. So how can you attend those churches that don't have forced at repentance? Because you don't do forced at repentance properly. If you do four step repentance, you meet God. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 19. If you meet God, what He gives you straight away, He gives you the gift of faith. He gives you happiness. He gives you all joy. So if you have all joy, how can you sit there all, all blue like a demon? That's someone who hasn't done four step repentance properly. So it's to those who smile that blessings come. Demons, when they smile, it's double minded. So they're like, oh, if I smile to that person, I'll earn some money. So they, they go, welcome, welcome. And they deceive and they cheat you. 
and then when you leave, they're like, you idiot. So they and their children, when, when they're about to die, if they've earned some money, does God let them live or does he make them die? Once you've earned some money, Proverbs 21, verse 6, he kills you. But if you don't die, it's, it's, it's to make you an idiot. So it seems like you're successful, but you'll earn for... So you're used for evil, Proverbs chapter 21, verse 4. So if you don't do four-step repentance properly and you do well, don't even go near them. You see, these people who are next to the prison, they all end up going to prison, Proverbs chapter 24, verse 1. So the evil who do well, people who do four-step repentance, they do, they do well, don't even go near them. So live. Let's only go the way where we surely receive blessings. So where is he? 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 19. Let's read it together. Namely, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and he has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Amen. So where is God inside of so God has said he will surely give blessings. To who? To me. So if we want to meet God, where do we have to go inside of? To go inside of Christ, Colossians chapter 1, verse 27, it is the mystery of Christ, four-step repentance. So this lacking servant is saying, you know, if, you, if you're a sheep, if you're a sheep, then you obey. But goats, they're like, why do you have to do this? All thoughts. It's not just... It's whatever thought, all the theories that you've learned in the world, it's all outside of Christ, it's curses. Until you enter inside of Christ, you will suffer. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5 and 6. So demons, what they've done with their head, with their IQ, it is the worst of demons, it's the worst of evil, but they don't know this. And that's why Calvinism, he hated James the most, and that's in James chapter 3, verse 15 and 16. So you have, whatever ism, you have to be careful because it is demons that make you ruin. So where do you surely receive blessings? Inside of four-step repentance. So to do this the whole day and to receive blessings. If I am blessed, then 10,000 generations are blessed. But if I am receiving curses, are disasters, then you kill three and four generations. Don't become someone who kills three and four generations. But please, let's surely receive blessings. Let's only do four-step repentance. If you do four-step repentance and you go inside of Christ, do you die or do you live? Well, our spirit lives, but me, I die. So if I die, what excuse will you have? Why do you become a, a goat? If you have thanksgiving, that's someone who is in Christ. If there is someone arguing inside of the church, no matter how clean that water, if you put one spoon of dog poo, you can't, you can't drink it. And that's why Proverbs chapter 22, verse 10, someone who makes excuses, who complains, who's proud or arrogant, if you don't cast them out, then everyone will, be rot, will rot. I want to be a sheep. So unless I die, you know, a sheep obeys God's word. So let's surely go that way. Then a thousand generations, Exodus chapter 20, verse 5 to 6, are blessed. What, you think it's because you teach them that they do well? No. Just because you have a good car, you don't get an accident? Even if you're own, in your own bedroom, God can take you. We've seen that in our country. We've seen the president die in his own room. So if Jehovah says no, it's over. So we have to meet the Lord properly. So it's God who helps. God is the Word. This Word is only in Christ. So after Christ, who is it? Jesus. John chapter 1, verse 14. Jesus is the Word. Jesus is God. So John chapter 10, verse 30, it says, I am God. So let's only go the way to do well. The whole day, let's just do four-step repentance, whether it be our children, my husband, my wife. So what they've done wrongly, to change it to blessings, let's surely receive blessings. Even though I tell you, if you're a dog pig, you don't understand. And then you say, oh, Pastor, when did you say that? At this time, I have said, 
or the things for you to receive blessings. But if you don't receive this, then that's disobedience. So if I receive blessings in a thousand generations, you will. If I don't receive, then three and four generations are ruined because they're cut off. So please, today, let's have a new start. Let's call upon the Lord three times and let's pray for our country and our people. God's first commandment is for us to pray for others to do well. But denominations, they don't pray for others to do well. That's why they're fake. So let's do according to the word and do well. Let's start. Lord. 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 Father God, my Father, you've given us this mystery for us to surely receive blessings. By forced yet repentance, may we and our children receive all the promised blessings. <laughs> 